Okay. Murray State head coach Dean Hood, the uh, Racers played their second FBS opponent of the season at Ball State last week. Uh, they'll open up OVC play. They're going to host Eastern Illinois on Saturday at Roy Stewart Stadium. So, Coach, just some thoughts, and uh, we got a bunch of people here want to ask you some questions. So, we'll go to questions after that. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, sounds crazy to say uh, you thought you, you made some strides and, and did some things well. Uh, when you get totally whipped 31 to nothing. But uh, I thought our guys did uh, improve in, in some areas and, um, you know, thought that we, uh, you know, played all the way up to the end. I mean, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, third and goal, first and goal from like the two and, and uh, you know, down 31 nothing. And there's a lot of teams that would just cash it in right there, let them score, get on the bus and our guys bowed up. And so, um, you know, really proud of the way they played, even though the score, you know, wouldn't say that you'd be proud of the way they played. All right, coach. Thanks. We'll go to some questions. Uh, first up, we got Dan from Prairie State Pigskin. He covers EIU. So Dan, if you want to start with your questions uh, for coach. Thanks. Good morning, coach. Morning. Um, you know, given your history in the OVC and this kind of being your last go, go round, I guess, what are some of your memories? And, and of course, Eastern Illinois factors into that. And then how do you feel about, you know, going forward next year in the Missouri Valley? Well, I mean, f first of all, you know, the, the relationship with the OVC has been incredible. I mean, I've been fortunate to be at, at two different schools now in the OVC and what a great conference, uh, what a great job, you know, that people have done in that conference. And we've been, been blessed and fortunate to, you know, to be a part of it. Uh, you know, there's, it's, uh, means a lot to me. And, and, you know, this season means a lot just because of, you know, being a part of it as a head coach, two different places and as an assistant coach. I mean, I saw some of the great rivalries, you know, with, with being there with Roy Kidd, you know, Roy Kidd and Bob Spoo, you know, with, with Eastern Illinois and, you know, uh, Roy Kidd and Jack Harbaugh, you know, Western and uh, Roy Kidd Boots Donnelly, Middle Tennessee, you know. So uh, I remember vividly being on Coach Kidd's staff and and going to Murray with uh, I don't know what we had. It, it was pretty, pretty big 17, 18, 19 game win streak and and Murray beat us. And it was that moment, you know, when I realized, wow, this is we must have been pretty good because they stormed the field and tore down the goalpost. And, uh, you know, I remember that vividly uh remember playing up in eiu and in, in the snow you know for uh for a championship winning the game to, to win a championship so got a lot of memories uh, of the ovc very very blessed to be a part of it and and uh, you know excited to play this last season thank you very much yes sir we'll go uh, adam wells next go ahead adam Coach, with conference play, you know, starting this week, how much do you use this as a complete reset and, and use what you learned those first three weeks at a non-conference play and kind of start the season over? Yeah, I mean, we do a complete reset every week, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, it doesn't matter you win 31 nothing or you lose 31 nothing. It's, it starts on Monday, you know, with that, with that next game. And, you know, every, we call that the, the fourth quarter, you know, all of our preseason stuff, we break up in the quarters and then in season every, every Monday is a new fourth quarter. So again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you did the week before, obviously you're going to look at what you did the week before and try to improve and, and on areas and try to not, uh, you know, not, not make the same mistakes and, you know, try to help guys by getting them in different spots or not ask them to do things that are too difficult for them and that type of thing. But, but you literally, you know, or, or on to the next week on, on Monday morning. You've played three quarterbacks this year so far. A lot of that's obviously out of necessity with injuries. Um, what have you seen at that position and, and going forward, how much do you see that maybe as an open competition trying to find the right guy to lead you guys into OBC play? Well, I'll tell you what I've seen out of that, just just with the, the uh, you know, playing different guys is really a, a – great job of you know our our offensive line and and other players uh, around you know just realizing that you know part of the next man up mentality is not only the guy that's going in at that position to honor their teammate by how they play but also that uh you know every other area of the of the team you know have to have to bow up have to uh be up have to lift their game up uh in order to uh in order to help. And so I've, I've seen a lot of that in particular in the old line. I think our old line has, has done a good job of, you know, trying to protect those guys that, that are, uh, you know, uh, new to, new to playing. 
my last question for you is uh, on the defensive side, uh, the guys have forced turnovers in each of the games this season. How satisfied are you with that aspect of the defense's play of being able to, you know, make big plays? Yeah, I mean, it, you're not going to stop anybody in college football unless you're creating some turnovers. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And uh, our defense has, has done that. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't protect the ball on the offensive side. You know, last week, you know, we did the previous two weeks against some pretty good defenses. So, you know, it was looking really good up until until last week where we didn't take care of the ball offensively. But uh, but yeah, that's that's a big, big part of defense. Obviously, you got to be structurally sound, be fundamentally sound. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to stop anybody unless you're, you're getting some takeaways. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Well, let's go John Wright next. Go ahead, John. Dean, good morning. Um, good morning. Watching the game the other day, uh, I know we had some guys dinged up, but they all got up and got off the field, it looked like to me. Uh, was I seeing that right? Yeah, you know, we had a lot of guys banged up that, that played, and then we had a lot of guys that, uh, you know, came in and played for guys that were either banged up or were out or could only do limited things. And, uh, you know, they played, like I said, in the opener there, you know, they they played until the very end. That was the encouraging thing for me, just showed the character of, of our football team, how they finished that game against Ball State. What I was saying is it sound, it didn't look like y'all had any real big injuries come out of this ball game though. Oh, out of out of this game. Yes. Yes. We were we're healthier uh this week, you know, for uh for having not got guys uh you know hurt during the during the ball state game. That had to make it feel really good to see those guys walk off the field or run off the field uh, after some of these last few weeks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm getting my exercise. I'm getting my exercise running out to the field and seeing what seeing what Fulton has to say about <clears throat> somebody's laying on the ground. I know you're tired of that. Also, you want to see these guys not have that happen in the first place. Speaking of which, what about Q and Witherspoon for this week? Yeah, those, those guys uh, both practiced yesterday. You know, so we're hopeful uh, that they'll be fine. You know, it's it's kind of uh, some of the guys are. You, you know, got the green light and some guys are, you know, hey, let's kind of see how they do during the week and let's kind of, you know, let's kind of, you know, add, let's let them do indie and then let's add, let them do group and throw them in a little bit of non-contact and then let them get thudded up, you know, so there is going to be a progression to, to know for sure. I thought a guy that really stepped up for you was Nick Walker the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, when, when uh, we were recruiting Nick, uh, you know, he's his uh, set on his, you know, his huddle or whatever, you know, Shug Walker. And so he ended up coming here and, and uh, I think Coach Sanders says, I'm not I'm not calling you Shug, I'm calling you Nicholas until you get in a game and make a tackle. And then uh, he, made, he made that sack against Ball State. So I told Coach Sanders, hey, you, you got to call him Shug from now on. That's a feather in your cap. Y'all did something that yeah. not even Tennessee could do. You sacked yeah. their quarterback the other day. Yeah, it was good. You know, we, we um, you know, were able to get interception. Able, I felt like we, you know, put some pressure on him. We got one, you know, a flag for hitting late, uh, you know, the, which is not good. But it felt like, uh, you know, he was at least feeling us, uh, you know, there and, and putting some pressure on him to throw the ball on time and some of those types of things, which helps your DBs. Sir. Sure. Uh, Coach, just maybe just a little bit more about EIU. Obviously, they're 0-3, too, so the things you said about yourself resetting every week, uh, they haven't had the results they've wanted, but and they have a new coach this year. So uh, what do you think you can expect from them? Well, I mean, first of all, they've played about as brutal of a schedule as, as we have and and played really well against some, you know, really good football teams. You know, Northern Illinois is, you know, one of the best teams in the MAC year in, year out. So, I mean, they're they're sitting there the same way we are. You know, saying, "Hey, goodness gracious, let's let's get into a uh, you know an OVC game and and see what we can do." So, you know, Coach Wilkerson's uh, you know done a great job there developing the guys that he had, getting some new guys in there. Uh, you know, you can you can see you know the influence of of Coach Spoo. You can see how good of a football coach he is when you when you look at the, all the things they're doing are the things we preach to our guys. I mean, they they are tough. Uh, they are run to the ball. They're physical. They're fundamentally sound. So. Uh, you know, he's he's going to get, uh, you know, the, the most out of his guys. And that's what we try to do. We try to get the most out of our guys, uh, whatever they can do. And you see that on film. You see the hustle. You see the toughness. 
Uh, and you know, they're, they got, they got really good players. I mean, they got two really good running backs, quarterbacks, you know, throwing six touchdowns over 500 yards and a couple of wide receivers to throw two thirty three and four, you know, defensively, they, you know, Eastern Illinois, they, they always got, they always got the linebackers, you know, and it's, it's no different 43 and 45 men are all over the place. 24, 25 tackles. They got interceptions. They got quarterback hurries. They got sacks, uh, you know, got active safeties up in the run game and, you know, 97 is really good D lineman and, and got a couple other guys that can play. I mean, so they, they got guys that can play and they're playing the game the right way. Coach Wilkerson has done, you know, done a great job, which is, you know, what I anticipate when I met him at the OBC, you know, conference, I was really impressed with him uh, and, and knew he would uh, have him playing hard and, and uh, you know, have him playing good football. And one more, I missed the hand up. Sorry, Jake. Jake from WSIL, go ahead. Yep. Uh, good morning, Coach. Um, I know you mentioned earlier when you just spoke that um, it's not really necessarily about the final result at the moment. At what point do you think it will become about that final score? Well, it, it is about the final score. I mean, it, you you, you got to win football games. Uh, it's way bigger than that. I mean, it's I don't want our guys tying their self-worth into the scoreboard, and I don't want to – treat them like the scoreboard is the only thing that matters because the team picture matters, you know, so uh, football is the greatest game ever invented because it, it teaches these guys, you know, life lessons are going to help them be, you know, good husbands and good dads and good neighbors and good leaders in their community, you know, so I think, uh, you know, I think football is not near as important as everybody thinks it is, but it's more important than anybody will ever know that's not involved in the game because all the things that you learn. Uh, but you got to win football games. You know, I understand that. They understand that. Our guys are disappointed. They want to win. Uh, but it's it's more important that they're that they're winners. You know, the way that they way that they uh, uh, conduct themselves off the field, the, the way that they, you know, if they match their talent with with effort, everything, every single thing that they do, uh, you know, they're winners. So so yeah, we want to win. But more importantly, we want them to be winners. And you know, the most times when you are doing things that make you a winner, you know, winning, winning comes. It just, it just hasn't come yet. And we're just going to keep, keep pounding the rock until it does. You also mentioned that every week you have to hit the reset button, even though conference play is here. Do you notice when you're looking through the game tape that these are new problems popping up or are these the same old problems popping up between game to game? You're talking about mistakes that we're making or. Uh, yeah. I just, I, yeah. Just, is it new, new errors? Is it old issues? Yeah, it's, it's some of both, you know, it's, it's repeated errors, you know, and sometimes it's the situation is a little different, but the, but the error is the same, uh, you know, but it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a learning process, you know, concept of transfer is, is, is real, you know, you, you, you get it in the meeting and then you go out and you do, you know, individual work and, and you didn't do it quite right. And then you get it in the individual work and then you go out in a group setting and you messed it up and, and then you get in a group setting and finally you can do it in a scrimmage, but you can't do it in a game, you know? So, I mean, it's a, it's a concept of transfer. So sometimes it is uh, different mistakes. Sometimes it's the same mistake, but it was a different, it was a different setting. Is it, are these mistakes hard to correct or is this? Uh, well, I mean, all, all mistakes are, are correctable. You know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, how quickly, you know, it, it takes. So yeah, all, all correctable mistakes, you know, especially when you're talking about talking about scheme, you know, that's, that's the mistakes that can get corrected because it's just not making the right decision in the, in the right moment, you know, and, and we're making mistakes as coaches as well. You know, you, you're, there's, there's no coach calling a perfect game and it's all on the kids, you know, making a mistake with something that you told them, you know, we've, we've made, uh, you know, our a lion's share of, of, uh, of our mistakes in the first three ball games. And I guess finally for me, you know, obviously you played at home once ready to come back and have a chance to, to do it in your own building again. Is that, I guess, kind of a nice feeling again? Yeah, it's always, you know, be home and, and be around your wife and kids and sleep in your bed and all that stuff is always great. And then, you know, being in, in front of your crowd, you know, your community, your your alumni, your students. I mean, it's uh, it's a great feeling for our guys, and it's you know definitely uh, better to be at home than than to be you know on the road. Thanks, coach. Yeah. All right, coach. Thanks for your time this morning. Uh, best of luck on Saturday, and we'll talk to you again next week. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dean.